stand for the reading of God's Word. Wow, I got hot quick, didn't I? <laughs> Whenever I was on. <laughs> okay. Amen. How many of you glad to be in God's house, this place? Amen. Come on, you can do better than that. How many is glad to be in God's house tonight? There we go. How many is ready to receive the promise of the Spirit in this place tonight? Amen. I'm going to be reading from Joel chapter 2, verse 28. It's a scripture a lot of us know, but it speaks truth tonight. It will come about after this, that I will pour out my Spirit on all mankind. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams, and young men will see visions. How many want that to happen in this place tonight? Amen. I'm just believing and expecting God to do great and mighty things in this place tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. Can we give the Lord a good praise for his word tonight? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, somebody give him a real good praise. Come on now. Somebody ought to just magnify him just a moment. We, we ain't no hurry. We ain't no order. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. Praise the Lord. My, my, my. I'm going to do this again because the sound wasn't really on. But Mount Vale, let's make our guests and visitors welcome. We're so glad you're with us tonight. So glad you've come to worship with us. And everybody, help me make Tommy Bates welcome tonight for being here at Camp Meeting 2021. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. A few quick announcements, and we're going to pray and get into our worship service. Don't forget, Mount Vale, and if you're a visitor and you'd like to come out and be part of it, we're having our end of summer family fun extravaganza Saturday, August the 14th. It's going to be a car show. They're going to have food. They're going to have blow-ups for kids and, and all that good stuff. So come out and be part of it if you can and, and come out. Also, don't forget this Sunday. How many knows what's happening this Sunday? Homecoming, amen. We're celebrating 102 years that Mount Vale's been in this area as a shining light for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Can we give the Lord a good praise, amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. My, it's a good looking crowd. So let's pray. Let's invite the Lord into the house and worship him with everything we got, amen. Let's pray. Father, we come to you tonight, Lord, giving you thanksgiving and praise. We thank you for your mercy and your grace and your loving kindness, Lord. Lord, we thank you for all that you've done here, God, through this week, Father God. And Lord, we're coming one more time tonight, God, asking you to anoint the singers and musicians as they lead us into worship, God. God, anoint Brother Pastor Tommy Bates tonight, Father God, as he brings forth the word. Anoint the word. Let it go forth and do its work tonight, Father Lord. Lord, we're asking you, God, to move in this house, God. Do what your word says and inhabit the praises of your people, Father Lord. Lord, we come expecting, God, you to do mighty acts and mighty wonders and mighty miracles in this place, God. Save, sanctify, fill with the Holy Ghost, heal, deliver, set free, strengthen, and encourage tonight, Father Lord. Lord, we're asking you, God, let your will and your way be done in this house tonight, Father. We ask it right now by the power, by the authority, and by the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody shout, amen.
all of your songs Come back to communion Come back to the stars Come into wide open spaces Christmas waiting for you It's like the weight has been lifted somebody let's give the Lord the best hand clap we gave him all night hallelujah I was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the Lord how many come tonight with a spirit of anticipation how many come tonight with a need lift your hands can I tell you this you can't pout your way into the presence of the Lord but you can shout your way into the presence of the Lord tonight amen you can worship your way in amen and I refuse to let circumstances situations amen and what everything's going on in the country and everything's going on in our lives amen and all around us amen let's push all that out tonight and let's come in with a heart of worship that says if there's anything like touching the Lord tonight I'm gonna get in his presence tonight anybody with me oh come on I said is anybody with me all right hey turn around with whatever you feel comfortable with fist bump shake hand with two or three people say you look so good on your way to heaven tonight I'm so glad you're on the, on your way to heaven and if they say they ain't ready just bring them on to the altar right now amen <laughs> so good to see you amen hey before I get myself in trouble amen before I get myself in trouble let's I want to do this because I'm gonna get in trouble anyway but uh, let's give all of our visiting pastors and ministers a big hand tonight amen I got so many friends that I can't mention and uh, and uh, I got a pastor coming in back there hey brother Dwight sister Birdie y'all come on up here toward the front would you come on in here hey, amen I, I, I call them out there and there's mom case look at that come on in everybody amen hey listen I come tonight amen 
Uh, old timers used to call it lift an offering, amen. And uh, can I just tell you this tonight, amen, I believe, amen. I, I believe with all my heart, and I think you do too, you wouldn't be here, but this is good ground, amen. And this man of God has an international ministry, and we're so thankful and humbled that he'd even come to a little country church like this out here right in the middle of nowhere. And I want us to be a blessing. I want him to come back. How many want him to be able to come back, amen? And if you feel like that, I want you to help me be a blessing to him, amen? Uh, I appreciate him, amen? He could be anywhere in the world he wanted to, but he came right here to us hillbillies. How many hillbillies we got in the house? Raise your hand if you're hillbillies. Praise the Lord for hillbillies, amen? Country folk, amen, that's all. I, I tried to be dignified one time. It didn't work too good for me. I'm just a hillbilly preacher, amen? And thank God, amen? Amen. Good to see each and every one. If you would, have you brought a gift tonight? Did you bring a gift tonight to be a blessing? All right. Hey, Brother Tim, good to see you, buddy. Uh, if you brought a gift, everybody's standing with me all over the building. Here's what I'm, I'm asking you to do, Amen. Hey, if you're going to write a check tonight, if you'll make it to Mount Vale, amen, I promise you, i got a clerk wherever she's at, somewhere, she's back there. I promise you, amen, if you want to come in after church and see the book, she's going, whatever you give, we'll make sure this man of God gets tonight, amen. Praise the Lord, amen. If you don't give enough, I'm going to make sure it gets and then some, amen. So I'm trying to get you to help me tonight, amen. I don't want to, I want him to leave from here being blessed tonight because you're going to be blessed tonight to be in the presence of of the Lord and the word that the man of God's bringing tonight. Amen. All right. If you got your gift, if you got your gift ready. All right. Let's lift up. Let's, let's hold up our gift. I got one too. I got one too. Are you ready? Let's hold our gift up to the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we're so thankful Lord tonight for what this represents. God, Lord, we're not just worshiping Lord and lifting up hands, but we are worshiping Lord tonight and we're giving into the kingdom of God. Lord, tonight we believe tonight, God, that this is kingdom work. And I'm asking you, Lord, to bless the gift and the giver tonight, God. And I'm asking you to move mightily in our lives, God. Lord, tonight we we give this service over to you. Lord, we, we Lord, tonight we want to we want to physically put money into this, amen, into this service tonight, God. So in seeds into this man of God that he may take this gospel and preach alone. And he can touch people, Lord, all over this world that we'll never see till we get to heaven. And God, I pray tonight, Lord, your blessings on the man of God. Bless the gift and the giver. And we give you praise, honor, and glory. And everybody said, amen. amen. Bring your gift and give it unto the Lord tonight.
those who the Son sets free is free indeed. Hallelujah! Come on, just praise it right now. Oh, come on, praise him. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. Hallelujah! Come on, praise him one more time. Come on, shut it. Hallelujah! 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 Come on, just let loose right now. Come on, some of you need to just let loose right now. Hey! Who the sun sets free is free indeed. Hey! Hallelujah! 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 Oh, Sada de Dios, Sada de Dios, Sada de Dios. Hallelujah! 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 Oh, we praise your name tonight. Yes. I thank God. I thank God. He picked me up. He turned me around. He placed my feet on solid ground. Hallelujah. He picked me up. He picked me up. And he turned me around. Hallelujah. Woo. Son of the Dio. Come on, let's just praise him one more time. Hallelujah. Come on, shout with the voice of triumph in this house tonight. Hey. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Shandala Dios. Hey, Nanana Dios. Shandala. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, that you picked us up, Lord, and you turned us around. Hallelujah. And you placed our feet. On solid ground. Hallelujah. You may say, well, why is she up there acting all crazy? Because let me tell you, you don't know where I've been. You don't know where he's brought me from. You don't know how he picked me up and he turned my life around. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful tonight. I'm so thankful tonight that I came out of that grave. I don't have no grave clothes on me, but I'm free. I'm free. Shut up. Hallelujah. Woo. There's a song or there's a word that we that we use around here sometimes. Brady's talked about it. I've talked about it. It's talked about being undignified. And sometimes it's okay to get a little undignified, isn't it? It's okay. All right, well, maybe not for some of you, but it's okay if we get a little undignified. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just praise him one more time. Hallelujah. He is under the Dios. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just all across this place. Come on, let's just lift our hands right now. Come on, let's just worship him. Come on, let's just worship him right now. In your own way, come on, just worship Him right now. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Come on, lift your voice. Come on, lift your voice in this place tonight. Yes. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. 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 Oh. 
someone I had someone earlier as I was coming in asked if we would sing this song and we, we didn't have it planned to sing and normally this is not something that I, I do I don't normally sing songs that someone has requested but this person went said they went to about 20 people and asked could you please have her sing this song please have her sing this song so we're going to sing this song redeemed by the blood of the lamb how many of you have been redeemed by the blood of the lamb yes
to cross that river I will shine in glorious light And when He calls me home I fall in His throne And forever, forever worship Christ forever I'm gonna worship Him Come on. 
sing it with us. overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And the word of our testimony is we overcome. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb. Yeah, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And the word of our testimony. Yeah. Come on, somebody that's been washed in the blood of the Lamb tonight. Praise Him. Two kinds of people in this world saved and lost. That's all there is. Amen. And for those that are washed in the blood, I believe it won't be very long to the coming of the Lord. How many's looking and hastening for that day? Amen. 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 Hey, all you Mount Villians, let's give all of our guests and visitors a good warm welcome. All of our pastors, amen. Uh, let's give all of our pastors that are here tonight. I'm, I'm going to get in trouble, so I'm not going to call nobody, amen. But so good to see each and every one of y'all out here tonight, amen. And we're especially, I don't think that Brother Tommy Bates needs no introduction. Uh, I think you know who he is, you understand his ministry, and we want to give him as much time we are so honored tonight. How many are just thankful he came by this way tonight? Amen. We're very, very honored to have him tonight. Amen. And uh, without any further ado, Brother Tommy Bates, come on and obey the Lord. I told him if he wanted to stay to one o'clock, we'd stay with him. How many stay with him? <laughs> Praise the Lord. You can be seated tonight. It's good to be here. Good to be here in Tennessee. Amen. And good to see all of you out on a Friday night. Ready to praise and magnify the Lord. The Lord is gracious to us. He's a wonderful God and a wonderful Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Walking in his shadows, he's walking by my side. He's a friend that goes with me. He's my savior, he's my guide. He leads me by still waters. He gives me joy. Walking in his shadows, he's walking by my side. When I'm sad and when I'm lonely, and I don't know what to do, I keep walking in his shadows, for I know. This child keep looking upward Gives me joy Makes me glad Walking in his shadows I keep remembering what Jesus said You may be sad, you may be lonely And you don't know what to do Just keep walking in His shadows I know He'll see you through Says my child keep looking upward He gives me joy and He makes me so very glad Walking in His shadows I keep remembering what Jesus he said he'd never leave me, he'd never forsake me. I keep remembering what Jesus said. 
He said, I'll go with you all the way. I keep remembering what Jesus said. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You, you hit it, I'll jump in. Boom, chicka, boom. A little bit slower. A little bit slower. There we go. Oh, they say our faith is all in vain. That prayer is only a wasted time. Just wait till Jesus shall appear. We'll leave this world so far behind. Oh, look up, rejoice, sing God's praise. Our troubles and our trials will soon be past. We'll rise to meet Him in the sky. We'll bid this old world goodbye. They say our faith is all in vain. That prayer is only a waste of your time. Jesus shall appear We'll leave this old world so far behind Oh look up, rejoice, sing God's praise Our trouble and our trial will soon be past Oh we'll rise to meet Him in the sky trials of this life they have passed we'll see him split those eastern skies we'll surely be home at last oh look up rejoice sing God's praise our troubles and our trials will soon be passed oh we'll rise him in the sky we'll see our Savior by and by oh look up reach or sing God's praise our troubles and our trials will soon be past oh we'll rise to meet him in the sky we're gonna see our Savior by and by. One more time. Oh, they say our faith is all in vain. That prayer is only a waste of your time. Oh, but wait till Jesus shall appear. Old world so far behind. Oh, look up, rejoice, sing God's praise. Our trouble and our trials will soon be past. Oh, we're gonna rise to meet Him in the sky. We'll see our Savior by and by. Oh, by and by. Oh, by and by. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My parents have been singing that song before I was ever born. Look up, rejoice, and sing God's praise. He is coming. The Lord is coming. Hallelujah. 
And we know that beyond the shadow of a doubt that he's getting us ready for that great, 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 great day. Oh, well, I told my troubles goodbye. Goodbye to tears and those sighs. This world where I roam, it cannot be my home. I'm bound for that land in the sky. Well, I walk and I talk with my Lord. I'm feasting every day upon His Word. Heaven is near. I can't stay here. Goodbye, world, goodbye. Now don't you weep for me when I'm gone. I won't have to leave here alone. And when I hear that great trumpet sound, my feet won't stay here on the ground. I'm gonna fly, gonna rise with the sky. I'm gonna rise with a shout, goodbye. Heaven is near, I just can't stay here. Goodbye, world, goodbye. My troubles goodbye Goodbye to each tear and his sigh This world where I roam Cannot be my home I'm bound for that land in the sky Oh, I walk and I talk with my Lord I'm feasting every day upon his word Heaven is near I can't stay here, goodbye world, goodbye. Now don't you weep for me when I'm gone. I won't have to leave here alone. When I hear that great trumpet sound, my feet won't stay here on the ground. I'm gonna rise with a shout, gonna fly. Gonna rise with my Lord in the sky Heaven is near I can't stay here Goodbye, world, goodbye Troubles goodbye, goodbye to each tear and his sigh. This world where I roam cannot be my home. I'm bound for that land in the sky. You see, I walk and I talk with my Lord. I'm feasting every day upon his word. Heaven is near, I can't stay here. Goodbye. <laughs> now don't you weep for me when I'm gone I won't have to leave here alone When I hear that great trumpet sound My feet won't stay here on the ground I'm gonna rise with a shout, gonna fly Gonna rise with my Lord in the sky is near. I just can't stay here. Goodbye world, goodbye. I said goodbye world, goodbye.
now don't you weep for me when I'm gone and I am going you know I thought about it I said well if I die I will never have to worry about pre-trib, mid-trib, or post-trib. I'll never have to worry about pre-millennial, post-millennial. I won't have to worry about seven horns and ten heads and dragons and beasts and bottomless pits. Now don't you weep for me when I'm gone. When I hear that great trumpet sound My feet won't stay on the ground I'm gonna rise with the shout I'm gonna fly is near I can't stay here goodbye world oh goodbye come on give him praise Come on, open your mouth. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. When I come to the end of my journey, Lived a lifetime for the stay alone Just caught a glimpse, getting a little bit anxious Started out a walking, but I'm running the last mile home Started out a walking, but I'm running the last mile home Ring the bell, blow the horn, shout hallelujah Short and roll on back and let me through Angels, take me to the throne Little David, play the prettiest music I'm a weary pilgrim, running the last mile home Weary pilgrim, running the last mile home I've met with many crossroads on my journey But never once has my God left me alone Well, the mountains and the valleys are behind me The road ahead straight and I'm running the last mile home Ring the bell, blow the horn, shout hallelujah Jordan, roll on back and let me through Angels, take me to the throne A little David, play the prettiest music I'm a weary pilgrim, running my last mile home Weary pilgrim, running my last mile home
Praise the Lord. Woo. It's an honor to be here tonight. I give honor to your pastor, to his family, and to those who have come tonight and all the pastors that are here. I've got two 17-year-olds with me and a young man from Guatemala. He's from our churches. I first made my trip to Guatemala. I was in nine different countries before I was 20 years old. I was called in the ministry 49 years ago. Never had much chance to be a teenager, you know, like everybody else. By the time I was 18 years old, I was driving a 55 passenger bus, pulling a U-Haul, taking 55 teenagers to youth camp in Barberville, Kentucky, from Northern Kentucky, just South Cincinnati. I started teaching school when I was 20, graduated my bachelor's and master's degree. I taught in a public school from 19, I served in 1976, but I actually had my teaching certificate and taught in public school from 1978 to 1981, even though I was working in the ministry all the time. People think when you get a paycheck, that's when you're in the ministry. <laughs> well, it don't work that way. Now, the people that works that way, when they don't get the paycheck anymore, they quit preaching or quit telling this glorious gospel. That's what the Bible describes, hireling. But I was just as much called, anointed, and appointed when I was a school teacher teaching the sixth grade in a self-contained classroom with 36 students, 24 boys and 12 girls. They'd always give me the, the boys that had problems because they didn't have an ED, emotionally disturbed unit, didn't have anything like that in those days. And I never had any problems. And I'm thankful for it. Of course, I had a paddle on the side of my desk. <clears throat> Didn't have to use it much, it's just the looks of it did something, you know. I could uh, take care of 700 students with bus duty by myself. Uh, but those days have changed. Things have changed. People decided that there's a better way to live than what the Bible says. So when you walk away from the truth, you will inherit the consequences. But we got. Uh, I was 28 when I first went to Guatemala. I think we had maybe eight or nine churches in those days. Now we have over 400 churches. It's called El Camino Biblico. We have um, a Christian-owned TV station, a Christian-owned radio station. And um, Richards that's with us tonight, he went to three years of Bible college there in Peyton, Florida, out in the jungles of Guatemala. So he's with us. I didn't think he'd ever get to be here, but he's here. And so we're thankful for that. And I'd like for one of the young men, they're, like I said, they're both 17. Jonah, why don't you come up and testify? Tell them, let them know that you can be 17. You want to use this mic? Let them know you can be 17. You can be an athlete. You can be good looking and still be saved. Leave off the good looking part. Yes, like I said, I am uh, 17 years old. <clears throat> I am. Uh, I was born and raised in Northern Kentucky, just like him. I just graduated high school this year uh, at the Christian school behind the church, and I went there. I was homeschooled from kindergarten to sixth grade, and from sixth grade on, I went to Community Christian Academy and graduated this year. And, and um, for college, I'm going to be a freshman, and I'm going actually to Johnson University. Some of you may know it, some of you may don't. It's about uh, 10 minutes outside of downtown Knoxville, Tennessee. So I'm going to be really close to here. And probably while I'm at the university, I'll probably come to this church. I've asked, the, yes, well, thank you guys very much. I do, I love it here. I was joking around with some of the people that were wearing a Tennessee volunteer shirt. I see only one, but there's other people that are wearing orange. I said, what's with all the orange around here? Uh, he's holding us. And got a lot of, but I, I told them, I said, I'm a Ohio State Buckeye fan, so I'm not Kentucky, I'm not Tennessee. Man, you guys, I love you all. But anyway, yes, I'm 17 years old, and I can't necessarily come up here and uh, share one big 
long life story, every good thing that's happened to me, every bad thing that's happened to me. But I can stand up here and, and relate to almost every single one of you guys that are here tonight in camp meeting and tell you that I know exactly what it's like to live in the favor of the Lord. I know exactly what it's like to experience the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. I know exactly what it's like to be in a place not interested in God at all and for God to get a hold of my life and to change me forever. And I can stand here before you all tonight and boldly proclaim before everybody that I am called preacher, that I walk devoted to the Lord and I do serve the Lord and there is not a day that goes by that I ever regret it, that I ever reject it, that I ever do not want it. God has had a hold of my life and I couldn't be more thankful for it. So I'm glad I'm in the house of the Lord tonight and I wish that you all praise the Lord with me. God bless you all. Praise the Lord. My wife is the principal of that school. She has been for I don't know how long. It's been a long time. The school's been there 38 years, but she has, and I've, I've pastored my home church now for 40 years. I was born and raised there, and she was too. But uh, anyway, she runs a tight ship. Here's the, here's the miracle. Our church was founded by Appalachian migrants. My mother's family came out of Clay County, Kentucky. My wife was born Harlan County. Okay. Where the sun goes up. <laughs> anyway, uh, they came to northern Kentucky in the early 50s for work. Something had happened in the coal mines. There wasn't hardly any work in the coal mining camps. They came to, to Cincinnati for work and settled there in northern Kentucky. We were the poorest church in Kenton County. Our church was in my grandfather's house. He had 16 brothers and sisters. They all weren't all in that area at that time. And uh, it was went from a prayer meeting to a chicken, to a tent, to a chicken house, to a barn. Nobody would sell the holiness people. We had two strikes against us. First of all, we were Pentecostal and no one in Southern Kenton County even knew much what a Pentecostal was. All they knew was they didn't want holy rollers in their county. So they wouldn't sell us property. And then finally, this is all before I was born. I was born in 1956 when the church made it to a basement. We got a piece of property, but too poor to put a roof on it. So they covered it with plywood and tar paper. And uh, the church always grew. People ask me all the time, they say, are you, you, are, do you pastor one of those kind of churches that started with seven people in your living room and now it's up to thousands? I said, our church never did have seven. <laughs> there wasn't a family in our church that had less than 10 kids hardly. So uh, <clears throat> even when it was in a chicken house in the barn, they got the pictures. It's just swarming full of kids. And we still have that reputation today. There's children everywhere. But... I'm the first one in my mother's family to graduate from high school. Our church, one of our pastors, Brother Clarence Seeley, could not read or write. But when the Holy Ghost would move on him, he'd open up the Bible and he would read. And it was so supernatural. He had the gift of healing. Fire would start burning in his hands. And in 1957, when my sister had an obstruction in her navel and through her body. They were gonna to have to do a very horrible surgery, open her all the way up as a baby. But he said, I feel that hot fire burning in my hands. Mom jumped up, slung her 30 inch ponytail and said, if there's hot fire in your hands, I got a baby that needs a healing. And in that basement, that basement with plywood and tar paper on top of it, Signs and wonders and miracles were done. The people were afraid of us, but they would line the highway clear when I was five and six years old up till I was in my 20s, early 20s. They would line the highway down old Route 16 and they'd listen to us sing. That's before we had air conditioning. The windows open and many things happened. We were uneducated people, poor people. But tonight, because we never lost what we had, never lost what we had. When we didn't have buildings, we had the Holy Ghost and fire. 
when we didn't have amplification. Now, our church always had music. They came up out of the mountains. We had banjos, mandolins, fiddles, about 15 guitars, I don't know how many tambourines, cymbals and accordions, you name it. If you played it, it was welcome. Scrub board in the works. Juice harp, French harp, any kind of harp that would harp. And uh, it's just amazing to me that uh, 68 years later, that on Daystar Network on Sunday, around the world we reach over a million. That's how many people watch Daystar. It's, it, it could, if everybody turned it on, it'd be 900 million. But that's not who turns it on. But there are a million that turn it on. And in the United States, over 100,000 just on Daystar. And every time when I get up to preach on Sunday, there's at least 40,000 people watching on the internet. And I think that that is so remarkable. We have 113 acres, and I'm not up here bragging. I just want you to know that God resists the proud, but He does give grace to the humble, and He gives lots of grace. And when Cincinnati, they have a big uh, magazine that they put out, it's like an executive business magazine, and when they listed the top 25 schools for high in academics for Ohio, Indiana, and Kentucky, Community Christian Academy was in the top 25. Those Catholic schools, Bishop Brosser, Villa Madonna, and all those Catholic schools that had been there for nearly 200 years, 150 years, we passed them up in academics. I think that's incredible. But we've never, <clears throat> never lost our doctrine, never lost our experience with God. When I took the church in 1981, there were still probably 25 people in the church that received the Holy Ghost before 1910. They came up from the mountains. Stories like, you'd ne like you could not even believe. Stories in the coal mining camps that if, if you didn't know the people and who was telling them, you couldn't imagine such things to ever be real. Dead being raised, angels visiting, lights shining. Even to the point Sister Martha Phelps was a midwife. Even to the point when it looked like that Marie Burgess, who is now 93 years old or 94, this is Gene Huff's, Gene Huff, the pastor of London, it's his wife's sister, Marie. When she was being born, Sister Martha Feltz, they were gonna lose her mother and her both. It, it was going to be sudden death for both of them, mother and child. But when Sister Feltz just sat in the chair, she said, oh God, help me. She went sound asleep, and God showed her in a vision a light bulb coming out of the ceiling. They didn't have any hardly light bulbs in. It had three knots in the cord. And the Spirit of God said, reach your hand in the womb and turn the head three times. It's unbelievable. Any obstetrician will tell you that's him. That would have to be only the best of the best could do that. Well, that baby's going to be about 95 this year in August. God is a powerful God. I grew up hearing the testimonies of how God provided food, how God provided a house. You know, when you're poor, you need God for everything. You can't lean on nothing else. And I just praise God for that. Let's turn to the book of Song of Solomon. I have some product back in the back. I usually give it away and I forgot to bring it up here. But everything is $5. You get three, you get the fourth one free. And if you don't have any money, the boys will give you one. I've got DVDs of what's on television, but when you watch TV, it's only you're only getting 18 minutes and it's edited. These are the non-edited versions of the DVD and CDs. Let's all stand together for the reading of the Word, if you're able to. And uh, I've got Walking in His Shadows, I think, back there. I've got the song, Somebody's Out There. There's quite a few. I didn't sing any of them, I don't think, tonight. Uh, I might, there might be a one of them have that song on there. And it's also on, what am I on? iTunes, YouTube, no. 
He says, I'm on everything. So if you're 17, whatever that means, you ask your grandchildren, your, your children, what that means. Song of Solomon. I don't see a watch. Oh, I see it up there. Hallelujah. Thank you. Song of Solomon, chapter 3, verses 6 through 11. Who is this that's coming out of the wilderness like pillars of smoke perfumed with myrrh and frankincense and all the fragrance of the merchant? Behold his carriage, which is Solomon's. There's three score valiant men that are about it of the most valiant, valiant of Israel. They all hold swords, being expert in war. Every man has his sword upon his thigh because of the fear that is in the night. King Solomon made himself a chariot of the wood of Lebanon. He made the pillars of silver and the bottom of with, with gold. And he covered it with purple. And the middle of it he paved with love for the daughters of Jerusalem. Go forth, all you daughters of Zion, and behold King Solomon with the crown wherewith his mother crowned him in the day of his wedding, in the day of the gladness of his heart. Just for a few moments, I'm dealing with the first line of Song of Solomon, chapter 3. Who is this that's coming out of the wilderness? Let's pray. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. I thank you, God, for this church, the pastor, the music, the singing. I thank you, God, for the faithfulness. Now I'm asking you, Lord, to let your word go forth with love, mercy, truth. And most of all, as your Bible teaches me, with demonstration and power of the Holy Ghost. And we'll give you all the praise and the glory in the mighty, wonderful name of Jesus. Let the church say, Amen. You may be seated. Just for a few moments tonight, we're dealing with the subject, Who is this that's coming out of the wilderness? First of all, I, I praise God because you've had this meeting going on all week. Most churches will refuse to have anything other than what they call the Sunday experience anymore. That's uh, any, any, any other time than Sunday, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's become too much. So I, I just give God praise because of your diligence to continue to keep the place, keep God's bright light shining as much as we can. You see tonight... God has wanted, he created you for relationship. He created you in his image and in his likeness because he wanted a family. The bottom line of the whole story is Satan was minister of music in heaven. Pride and iniquity was found in him. He was fired. Jesus said, I beheld Satan fall as lightning from heaven. Don't rejoice because demons are subject unto you, but rejoice because your name is written in heaven. The bottom line is Satan is fired and God said, now wait a minute. Lucifer worshiped me because of habitat. It was what he was created to do. But I'm going to create a new species in my image and in my likeness. And this new species is going to worship me and praise me because they choose to. You've come here tonight because you choose to. You lift up your hands because you choose to. You've made a decision to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. So the entire picture of the human race is created for fellowship with God. Union with God. Not as the modern day church is trying to, trying to portray it as a 20-20-20 experience. 20 minutes of praise and worship, 20 minutes of fellowship and announcements, and 20 minutes of motiva motivational speaking. You come to this 20, 20, 20, two times a month, and you score high. You're recognized as one of the most wonderful churchgoers in America. But God never came to this earth, went to Calvary, was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him in order for us to give him 20, 20, 20, and then hoot with the hoot nanny, shindig with the shindig, and club with the clubbers. That's never been his intention. He wants to be in your literature. He wants to be in your music. He wants to be on your vacation. 
He wants to be on your cruise. And I know some people don't believe this, but he wants to be in your wardrobe. <laughs> he wants to be in every area of your life. He don't want you turn him on and turn him off and let's just, just have God when you need him. He wants to be in every aspect of your life. And he portrays this and shows this in the scripture from the book of Genesis all the way to the book of Revelation. It, be, it begins with a wedding and it ends in a wedding. It begins with it's not good for Adam to be alone. And it ends with John said, I, John, saw that city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride for her bridegroom. It starts with a marriage contract and ends with a marriage contract. This thing does not end in a funeral. It ends in a wedding. Because the, the institution of marriage is the first social organization that has been established. And it is a representation of God's relationship with humanity. That they too shall be one. God wants he and his church, his family to be one. He has spoken to us in the days of old through creation. His grace spoke to us through creation. His grace spoke to us through conscience. His grace spoke to us through the law. His grace spoke to us through the prophets. His grace spoke to us through His only begotten Son. And right now we are living in the last dimension and dispensation of the grace of God. It is His grace in the Holy Ghost working through the church, drawing us to God Himself through the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. So everything that you find in the Scripture that pertains to a wedding gives us insight of this interpersonal relationship with God. God wants to be in your life. I come from a people, oh glory to God, I, I, don't talk, I, I don't try not to get on it and stay on it because when I do, it seems like I have a hard time getting off of it. But when you're raised with a great grandmother whose mother received the Holy Ghost in 1906 and my great grandmother with 16 children when she needed food and went out in the field to pray and there was no food in those Appalachian mountains that the Holy Ghost moved on her and a rabbit stuck up two of his ears. And she took a rock and hit that rabbit and killed it. She had a knife in her apron and went down to the creek to skin that rabbit and to wash it, giving God praise and thanks. And when she did, a, str a stringer a crappie that somebody must have caught the night before and their stringer got loose, come, roll, come coming down the river. And she went shouting all the way back to the house with a stringer a crappie in one hand and a rabbit in the other and giving God the praise and the glory. And as a little... She went on to heaven when I was eight years old. I saw my first vision in her house when I was about five or six years old. God gave me a vision in the night. But being at my great grandmother's and watching her with her snow white hair. And three times a day that one knee would drop to the ground. And her voice she'd begin with this oh, oh, oh say. She would begin to move and speak in unknown tongues under the power of God and to see her as old as she was and in poor health. Given God, it'll, it's something that is totally imprinted in my life that I could never forget. And then her daughter, my grandfather's oldest sister, Aunt Helen, that was a prophetess of God, one of the most godly women you'd ever know, oh, walking in the spirit at all times. 
times and at 14 years old when I went to visit my cousins they had gone away from God and they said Tommy we're going down to the river I was 15 said we're going down to the river there's three girls their daddy owns the saloon they would given us each a bottle of liquor and we're going down to the river we're going to drink and we're going to sleep around with these girls you want to go with us and I you know I wasn't on fire for God I said sure enough it's time for me to break my virginity and get drunk I'm ready for it and mom and dad were several hours away and I didn't have anything to worry about we'd just tell a lie and say we was going to stay all night at another cousin's and not tell the truth but while we were walking on the way to a, a, an experience of sin where I was going to lose my virginity and get drunk uh, we were walking God, not, I can't say God spoke to Aunt Helen uh, but for some reason she made a chocolate cake that morning uh, and one of my cousins said Aunt Helen's made a chocolate cake nobody had air conditioning and we went up to the house we could smell it uh, when we got on the porch Aunt Helen said boys uh, come on in uh, I've just made, made you a just made a chocolate cake uh, she said I didn't know if I was going to have company but I thought maybe company will stop by and she said just sit down right here just sit down here for a moment and when she turned around she went whoa yay and I say you have been weighed in the balance and found wanting she said boys you can't get no chocolate cake there's sin that lies at your door come on in here she took us in the living room and those old hands that were calloused that would take a uh, take an old can and cut her cabbage up with it to make sauerkraut uh, those old callous hands uh, from the top of our heads all the way down our back uh, she said Satan you won't have them uh, Satan you cannot have them and you cannot have them and for 45 minutes she rebuked the devil and then she prophesied and she said yeah I say you will preach the gospel and she laid her hands on me and said in your voice yay shall be heard around the world and she prophesied well after we had went and waited that long the girls got mad took their liquor bottles and went home it was a year later that I got on fire for God and I married a virgin young man at 23 years old and I've never tasted alcohol in my life. Uh, that's the kind of people I was raised with. I was raised with somebody that knew God. Uh, somebody that had a relationship with God. Uh, you can't get any, you can't expect God to do something if you don't know Him. Uh, and you can't know Him until you spend time with Him. Uh, and you've got to enjoy your time with Him. Uh, and enjoy the moving of the Holy Ghost. Uh, so everything we read, uh, when we read about Adam. The Bible said that God, He created Eve and presented Eve to Adam. God is creating the church and going to present the church to the Lord Jesus Christ. How many of you believe He is King of Kings? How many of you believe He is the King of the universe? Do you really believe that Jesus is the King of the universe? Well, if you're going to be the wife of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, then you must be the Queen of the universe. Everything that's happened in history has happened for the formation of the church. History has happened to form you and to bring you into this relationship with God. Everything on this planet has happened for this love relationship. When you get to the in the, the Bible, the Bible said that Abraham, he said, Eleazar, I want you to go into a far country and I want you to find my only begotten son. I want you to find him a wife. Eleazar is a type and a shadow of the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is in this far country. And the Bible said, Eleazar, he found Rebecca. And he said, Rebecca, there's, there's, a, there's one that wants you as his wife. She had never seen him, but he unloaded those ten cats Camels. They were covered with silver and gold and tapestries and fragrances. She said, I don't know who he is, but I know he's got a whole lot to offer. Hallelujah. And she jumped on that camel and rode 700 miles. And the Bible said that by the time she got to the field where Isaac was, even though she had never seen him, the Holy Ghost had told her so much about him that she jumped off of her camel and she ran 
man to meet him. It's not going to be, oh listen, it's not going to be a shock when we see him because we've been talking to him. We've been praising him. We've been living for him. We've dedicated our lives to him. You get to the book of Ruth. There are three characters. There's first of all Naomi. And then there's Boaz. And then there's Ruth. Naomi is the word. She is the word. that She is the scripture. And Boaz is the Lord of the harvest. And Ruth is the Gentile bride. Oh yes. Naomi said Ruth. I'm going to show you how to get married to the Lord of the harvest. And when you get to chapter 4 I believe it is. Or 3. When you get to chapter 3, Naomi said, Honey, the first thing you're going to have to do is wash yourself. And then anoint yourself. And then put on the best garment. And then wait till about the midnight hour. And you're going to become the wife of the Lord of the harvest. Do you hear it tonight? Oh, God wants this intimate relationship. He wants to move on you in the car. He wants to move on you outside. Somewhere between the barn and the chicken house. He wants you to get that shoulder shaking experience uh, he wants you to get that oh if, if it takes a song if it takes a song from Caleb uh, in order to get you do your little dance uh, you don't have it yet uh, all you do is just jump around a little bit uh, oh but when you have something you hear me when you have something uh, when everything is going wrong uh, and there's no friends to be found uh, and you walk from your house out to the chicken house uh, and the stars are in the sky uh, and when you look up and you begin to give God the praise and the thanks I want you to know yes the church is in for a great move of God but it's going to be a move where the people are in love with their Savior they are in love with their God they're in love with the one who redeemed them the next story we find is in the scripture and it is the scripture of Hosea and Hosea Hosea, he goes down to the holiness church and he finds him a young lady. She's playing a tambourine. She's wearing those old fashioned dresses and she's singing those songs. But her mom and daddy, they've been, they've been bootleggers for years and she comes from a wild family. And I'm glad the girl got saved, but the Bible take, teaches about generational weaknesses, you know. You better know what grandma and grandpa did. You better know what your aunt and uncle did because if it worked on grandpa, Satan's going to try it on you I said Satan's going to try it on you if depression drove them to drink he'll put depression on you you got to say in the name of Jesus by the blood on that cross every generational curse has been nullified my name is written in the Lamb's book of life I will not be an alcoholic I will not be that's what Jonah has to say that's what I had to say our family's filled with alcohol I've warned my children don't smell it, don't look at it don't go near it it carries a generational curse with it that thing will be like a monster it'll overtake you I know there's there's a church up where we live in Cincinnati they're getting ready to have a women's conference and you know what it says on the brochure it says 6,552 bottles of wine it's going to be the greatest women's conference that Cincinnati has ever had a Christian women's conference. I said, oh God I wouldn't go near that place with hot flashes, cold flashes and menopause and drunk who in the world would want to go near that? I said who would want to go near that? But don't you feel sorry for those who have alcoholic parents. Uh, for those who have alcoholic children. Uh, that churches are so weak-kneed and yellow-bellied. Uh, that they're scared to death to say anything about drinking all this stuff that's going on in the church. Uh, oh, listen. Uh, I know they can wear their little tight britches. Uh, their little skinny jeans and show you their thighs all ripped out. Uh, and drink a little wine on the side. Uh, but I'm here to preach to you tonight. Uh, when you love Jesus, uh, you don't need that old stuff. Uh, You've got a new wine. You've got a new way of living. How many's got the new wine? Yeah. How many's got the new wine and you don't want anything else? Well, 
The Bible said that he went ahead and married this little holiness girl, which was good. They had a little boy, then they had a little girl, then they had a little boy again. They had three children. And something happened. Something snapped in that girl. I guess she went out to dinner with the girls. And the girls said, now, now listen, honey, all you do is go to church. You go to church on Wednesday, Sunday morning, Sunday night, and every revival. Don't you ever do anything for yourself? Come on, let's go out. Let's have a night out. Just go out with the girls. And old little poor little Gomer, here she goes out with the girls. And she tells her husband, I'll be all right. You just stay here with the kids. Everything's going to be all right. But she gets out there at that, out there at that, uh, at that big restaurant. And, and, the, and all at once, the, all the girls pour them a drink. And they said, aren't you Gomer? Ain't you going to drink? Well, no, you know, we're from the holiness way. But Gomer, it won't hurt you just to take a drink. She took one drink, then she took two. She drank three, then she drank four. And the next thing you know, that harlot spirit that was in her family, that drunken spirit that was in her family, it began to take over her as the alcohol consumed her. And the moment, the moment that you lose your consciousness to, be, to make proper decisions, there's going to be a devil show up. Here he came, six foot two with black curly hair. He said, uh, you know, he said, I don't know. I've, I, I bought me a new house. And, and I don't know if I've got it decorated nice or not. Before you go home, would you stop and tell me if my drapes are matching my carpet? That devil knows how to ring you in. He knows how when you're good and drunk anyway. And old poor Goma, she goes over to his house. It didn't end long till she jumped right in the bed of adultery with him. And it went from one adulterous affair to the other. One adulterous affair to another. One an adulterous fair until that hot Holy Ghost shouting tambourine playing little holiness girl ended up the Bible said on the auction block on the auction block she wasn't worth a dime now she lost her beauty she had lost everything and there she is in rags they cut her price in half now she's not even worth as much as a sack of feed they're auctioning her off and she feels worthless but God God put this in the Bible. I've added a little bit to it to make it real for you today because if you just read over it, you're going to miss the message. But this is the message. And the message was that while she was standing there with hardly any clothes on, her beauty had turned to wrinkles. Everything she had had been taken away. But she heard a voice. Nobody wanted her. But she heard a voice. I said nobody wanted her. And when she heard heard the voice. She knew who it was. It was Hosea. He said, I'll take her. I'll take her home with me. I wonder, what does that God say to the church? He wants the backslider. He don't care how far gone they are. He don't care how far that they walked away from him. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give him praise. I don't care. Hallelujah. This is in the scripture because he wants you to know he's married to the backslider. He wants your son. He wants your daughter. Don't, don't you dare give up on your children. Don't you dare give up on them. You say, I can't believe what's happened to my child. I can't believe what's happened to my mother. She's lost everything. She's hooked on drugs. Oh, yeah. I see someone out there in the crowd. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, when nobody else will take you. That's when God says, I am here. I am here. I am here. God is married to the backslider. We've got to be careful. All of these things we're facing right now are distractions. To be vaccinated, to not to be vaccinated. To be this political party, to not be this political party. To be this part, we're living in one of the strangest days ever. My, I'm, I'm just broken 
on the inside because of injustice in America to think that parents around the world will take their beautiful little girls that have an athletic talent and take those little girls and sacrifice. Those little girls will work through lunch. Those little girls will watch their diet. They'll go all the way through school, all the way up. And then finally they get to get into the Olympics. And when they get into the Olympics, a transgender male comes up with enough testosterone to knock the whole human race off the ball. He comes up there and steals everything. And the transgender and the LGBTQ, whatever it is, all of that put together says, oh, isn't it wonderful? No, it's not wonderful. It is injustice. I said it's injustice. I said it's injustice. It is injustice. If you let the devil get hold of your mind, he's going to have you angry at the Democrats. He's going to have you angry at the Republicans. He's going to have you angry at the vaccine people. He's going to have you angry at the anti-vaccine people. He's going to have you angry at the LGBTQT community. He's going to have you angry with everybody. We've been through one of the worst storms that we've ever been through. Do you hear me? We've been through it. Preachers have prophesied. If this political party wins, there's going to be four years of revival. And if this political party wins, there's going to be the great tribulation. Oh my goodness. If this political, and I said, why? If why is it going to take four years to bring revival? Why didn't they have it the first four years when they had the opportunity? But in the, the four years that they had, who they said was going to bring revival, when they had him, they drank more beer than they ever drank. Preach cussed from the pulpit more than they ever did. They still put a string up their back end and walk the beaches without hardly any clothes on, without any shame at all. If we wanted revival, we could have had it then. Hallelujah. And then some said, if this president wins or if this party wins, we're going into the great tribulation. So pastor, I have spent February... April, May, June, I'm here in July. I've had to pump the church up. I've had to tell them that let me tell you something. A Democrat can't bring revival and a Republican can't bring revival. A presidential election has nothing to do with revival. God paid the price on Calvary. Whosoever will, let them call on the name of the Lord. If you want revival, you can have it right now. I said if we want it, we can have it right now. Now, this could be the greatest experience that we've ever had. Give the Lord a clap and a shout of praise. Yeah. I said, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We can't get distracted. I said, we can't get distracted. We can't get distracted because your son, your daughter, is standing on the auction block. Some of them's lost everything. They're bound. They're bound. They're bound. <laughs> Woo. When that bar room don't want them. When that dope crowd don't want them. When that whorehouse don't want them. You hear me? When all of the filth and the trash don't want them anymore. <laughs> Who do they find? <laughs> They find here comes Aunt Maud. <laughs> Honey, I'll pray for you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Here comes Brother Combs. Don't know, huh? Oh, the Lord wants to, wants to save your soul. We cannot be distracted because in these marital relationships that God is showing us in the scripture, He says, I am married to the backslider. I want them to return unto me. And before you ever hear a trumpet sound, you're going to hear the knocking of Jesus on the door of his church it's going to sound louder than the drug scene it's going to sound louder than the alcohol it's going to be God manifesting his glory let's give him praise now we get to this this text finally song of Solomon you know if you don't know that this is a Holy Ghost book it don't make any sense to you. 
Solomon was a rich man. He had 700 wives and 300 concubines. Now, a concubine is like it's a wife, it's legal, but they just don't get any inheritance. He's a little stingy. <clears throat> and with all these women, he had to have an interpreter because he married like the princess of Spain, the princess of Yugoslavia, the princess of Germany, the princess of Russia. Here they Oh, grosh vitam, vish What'd she say? She said she needs a new pair of shoes before she can go out to dinner. <clears throat> Had to have an interpreter. And one day sitting in his palace, he said, they all have my name, but they don't have my heart. He said, I'm going to search. I'm going to search until I find those that have my heart. Those that have my heart. I'm going to search. I'm going to search. He took off his royal crown. He took off his royal robe. He got a used shepherd's garment that smelled like sheep. Put on some used sandals. He went out the escape tunnel of the palace. He went 50 miles to the land of Shulam. He's dressed himself up to be a poor shepherd. He gets out in the land of Shulam. That's the agricultural village of his kingdom. That's where all the poor people worked out in the field. All the poor people out there working in the field. He gets a looking around and he catches his eye on her. She's knee deep in mud digging up potatoes. she got a stack of beans in one hand. She's been hoeing watermelons. She's been picking beans. She's a filthy mess. The old Solomon shows up and He's a professional of putting the move on anyway. Anybody with 700 women? <clears throat> and he starts making his eyes. And she, she brushes it off at first. <laughs> then after she brushes it off, she got connected. She went home and she said, Oh, mother, I found him who my soul loves I found him whom my soul loves her brother said what you're underdeveloped you don't have any curves honey you're straight up and down you look like six o'clock now it's more <clears throat> listen I'm giving you the holiness version <clears throat> you have to read the song of Solomon to find out what he really said he said, oh, if you were a door, we'd cover you up with, seat, with, with silver. If you were a wall, we'd cover you up with cedar. If you was a door, we'd cover you up with silver. If you was a wall, we'd cover you up with cedar. In other words, honey, you don't have much to offer. She said, but I found him whom my soul loves. I found him whom my soul loves. I found him whom my soul loves. And her mother said, well, who is he? Said, well, he's a shepherd. She said, I know Ronnie Shepherd, Johnny Shepherd. I know Toby Shepherd. I know Brian Shepherd. If he's a shepherd, where does he shelter his sheep? Where does he shelter his sheep? She said, I found him whom my soul loves. You see, this modern gospel has presented Jesus as Solomon, not the shepherd. You can't get people lost. You can't get them lost. They don't want to say they're the lost sheep. They're smoking pot. They're living with their significant other. They're living with their girlfriend. They're drinking their wine, their liquor, and their beer. They're watching porno, watching filthy movies, going to a cinema, watching open nudity in front of their eyes. And they sit there and they'll just lift their hands just like you do. Because the message that's being preached is not if a man have a hundred sheep and one of them goes astray, will he 
not leave the 90 and 9 and go into the thickets, into the wilderness, into the woods? And will he not find that one that is lost and lay it over his shoulders and bring that lost sheep into the sheepfold? Oh, let me tell you something. You were lost. You better knock your religious pride right out of the seat and say, let me tell you something. I was lost. But one day when I was lost, one day when I wasn't looking for him, he was looking for me. One day when I didn't want him, he wanted me. One day when I ran from him, he ran toward me. One day when I was trying to get away from him, he come running to me. He caught me. He grabbed me. He threw me over his shoulders. He said, you're not going to be this. You're not going to be a drug addict. You're not going to be a liar. You're not going to be an alcoholic. I'm going to take you to my sheepfold. I'm going to surround you with my protection. I'm going to feed you. I'm going to anoint your head with oil. I'm going to fill your cup until it overflows. I'm going to cause you to be the head and not the tail. I'm going to cause you to be above and not beneath. I'm going to cause you to rise up. That's what God has done for you. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Glory to God. This new modern religion don't want to preach a lost sheep. Why they'll put them in water and baptize them before they ever even know Jesus. Just so they can look at the scoreboard and tell everybody. We baptized 566 last Sunday. Took degenerate beer drinkers. Liars, cheaters, dopers, fornicators, and adulterers. They went in the water dry and came out wet. But when you know him as your shepherd, and then after a while, after a while, he started talking. <laughs> he said, now Shulamite, I got to tell you something. Have you ever heard of Solomon? Yeah, I've heard of Solomon. He's the richest, most powerful man in all the world. Oh, let me tell you something, little Shulamite. Let me tell you about this Solomon. Hallelujah. Hit that note if you're going to help me. I have to hear it every now and then. <clears throat> he, he's young. He'll get, to, he'll get used to it one day. I still can't hear it. Buddy. <laughs> just, just any note. Just stay in the same one you were in. <laughs> hallelujah. I said hallelujah. All right. Well, well, that's all I'll, I'll preach on that one. Well, <clears throat> mm, that'll work. That'll work. Yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ooh, ooh glory. <laughs> I'm not there yet. I'm going to get there in a minute. Hallelujah. Whoa, bless his name. He said, oh, sure, might. Oh, Shulamite, let me tell you about Solomon. <laughs> he has shields of gold. He has white stallions in his army. He has a palace that has 168 rooms. I don't know if that's true or not. I just had to have a number. Oh, Solomon, oh, Solomon. He's the richest, most powerful man in the world. She said, oh, shepherd, oh, shepherd, <laughs> how come you know so much about Solomon? <laughs> He said, look at me right in the eyes. You're looking at Solomon. You're looking at Solomon. The world thinks we're nothing but a bunch of peasants around here. I know we can't compare to Bill Gates. I know we can't compare to the billionaires of this world. They think we're just a bunch of fanatical nobodies in, from nowhere. That we're nobodies going nowhere. But what they don't know is, oh, the king of the universe has been our shepherd. He's washed us in his blood he's clothed us with his love oh and it's not going to be over yet either when the antichrist thinks that he's got this world and when the antichrist says i got everybody under my control about that time
time. I see something coming out of the wilderness. I see something coming out of the wilderness. Why, it's nobody but Solomon. Solomon himself, the glory of the Lord is going to cover the earth. Before Jesus Christ comes, he's going to show his Shulamite bride off. Signs and wonders are going to return. All the miracles of the book of Acts are going to... Do that one? If you don't, that's fine. It says, all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. Is there anybody that needs to pray tonight? The shepherd of your souls watching out for you. Anybody need to be renewed, restored, or revived? Renewed, restored, or revived? The shepherd's calling, brother. You just coming up with him? You're coming too. Is there anybody that needs to be restored? renewed has anybody through this pandemic you've just spiritually been knocked up against the wall and you really need a fresh a fresh touch of oil I know I'd called for backsliders and now I'm calling for anybody the second appeal is how many have you been dry but tonight you say Lord I need a fresh drink of water I need fresh oil. I need a renewal, a reviving, and a restoration. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask the third question. Because many of you have got pastors here from all over. But tonight when I was preaching on Hosea and Gomer, there's somebody that came to your mind. And you want to stand in proxy for that loved one. That means in place of. You say, I want to come and stand in this altar in place of that one. As they sing this song, a little bit of it, I want you to come and stand in proxy of every loved one that came to your mind. If you feel led, I want you to come. making a mess of things sing something you know it don't matter what song it is God never told me to sing this it's just something I like so sing something you know it'll make it smoother father in the name of Jesus you see first of all let's get these right here everybody pray this prayer say Jesus forgive me of my sins my failures my transgressions I've come to this altar tonight to be renewed and restored in Jesus name now the rest of us that say Lord tonight I want you to cover me with your blood from the top of my head to the sole of my feet because Jesus I'm standing in proxy of this one that I love now in the name of Jesus, I rebuke the spirit of suicide on some of these. I rebuke the spirit of homosexuality. I come against the spirit of lesbianism. I come against everything that's trying to tear these of God's heritage away. Lord, in the name of Jesus, release your power. Release your love. Release your mercy, Lord. Lord. Been 
so, so good. Every breath Lord, touch them, Jesus. Start calling their name out. You don't have to say it too loud. Touch Bill, touch John, touch Mark. of God. Hallelujah. God has surrounded you, Lord. Let the Holy Ghost move in this altar service. Oh, release your spirit of revival. Release the spirit of renewal, Lord. There's something moving in the house right now. I will sing of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Yes, your goodness. Your goodness is running after. It's running after. Oh. service to watch a big a big young man like this weep bitter tears at the altars worth me coming from independence kentucky no amount of money can pay for this there's something eternal going on right now oh just if god is moving on this young man god can move on your family too come on turn your faith loose yes have been faithful all my life you have been so so good oh, I'll shout <laughs> I'll shout for the goodness of God one more time oh my you have been so, so good. <laughs> there goes that good shepherd. There goes that good shepherd. Your goodness is running out. The good shepherd's going after him. You're a big man, buddy. Is something happening? It is. Throw him up high. You see what's happening to him? That can happen to your loved one. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, 
He's speaking in unknown tongues. Oh, the Holy Ghost is moving. 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 Your goodness is running after, running after me. All my life so, so Wave your hands all my life you have. Come on, yes. All my life you have been faithful. Hallelujah.
This young man just got renewed, restored, revived, speaking in the unknown tongue. I want us to, you know, I said that the, the song really didn't mean anything, but the song does mean something to me. I just don't even know the words. It sounds like you've never played it, but you're learning. You're doing a great job. This young man is doing a great job. He's got the whole, he's got the whole works, don't he? Talent, good looks, and great parents. Yes. I want you to, that's, you know, a lot, a lot of the songs I can't remember of the new songs because I'm, I'm old. <laughs> but this one, first time I heard it, it won't stop. We sang it. We just got back from Cuba with 40 teenagers down there. And after it was over at the fellowship and we was eating, the Cuban young people in Hialeah, we didn't go to Cuba. We went to Hialeah, Miami, Florida. If you go to Hialeah, Miami, it's all Cuban. Burger King's in Spanish. Walmart's in Spanish. It's all Spanish. That's the only church in the entire county that's had indoor service because the Latino people are very terrified of the virus. But when church was over, we all started singing. All my life, you have been faithful. Every breath that I'm able. You know, I can go, I can go back at six years old, coming out of the first grade, crossing from the school. My granny lived next door. It was her parents that gave the school that property. And they tore down the log cabin that my daddy was born in. And it had snowed about three inches. And they just put a piece of boards across that old well. It's 50 feet deep. I didn't see it. I was walking a little child with my school books. When I stepped over that well, a rotten board gave way. My books went 50 feet down into the water. And I hung there dangling my legs. I cannot tell you to this day who picked me up. You have to have experiences like that. I can't tell you who picked me up. In the third grade, when we had a substitute bus driver, it was an icy day and our, our house sat on a hill. I was the last one to get off the school bus. There's about 12 of us got off at that stop. And I slipped on a piece of ice. Next thing I knew, the tire was coming over top of me. I don't know how. My little feet hit that tire and I landed in a pool of mud. So it's not just that. I can tell you at 16 years old on Masada in the country of Israel when a suicide spirit visited me for the first time in my life. And I heard demons. I didn't know that was a place where the Jewish people committed suicide. I wasn't listening. I really didn't care. I wasn't on fire yet for God. I was in Israel. And I rocked my feet off the side of Masada. I could see the Dead Sea, all of it thousands of feet beneath me. I should have fallen off that day. But all my life, you have been faithful. All my life, you have been so, so good with every breath. I will sing of the goodness of God. We're going to sing it one more time, only this time. Surely, surely somebody here should have went off the side of a road and hit a tree. Surely somebody should have drowned in a pond. Surely somebody came that close to dying. Can you sing this one more time to the Lord? Oh, <laughs> get ready. 
Get ready. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. Every breath that I am thankful. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God.
know this is two military people that got a touch of heaven. I don't know now if this, if this young man has real mother, real father. You know, I said, I don't know if he has real mother, real father, but most people in the military don't. They, most, most of the young men in the military, young ladies, don't even know what it's like to have a father. They never met theirs. So we need people in the military that's got this good power working. He got a touch of heaven. I want to thank you. If you're a partner, you know I get so carried. I'm, I'm so serious about the service. I forget to give away product. I forget to mention it. I forget to mention uh, partnership. But all of you that partner $25 a month, you're the one that pays for the television broadcast. And you're the one that pays for all of the internet. And I really appreciate you because I could never do it without you. Well, it wouldn't be done, let's put it that way. So we really appreciate it. Tonight, um, I've got things we have to do. I've got meetings in the morning. And your, your church has got me such a nice place to stay. And Jonah says he can drive all night. My wife says, watch him. Say, because he's only got two switches on and off. She said, if he goes off, she said, I know him. She said, I've had him on class trips before. She said, when he goes to sleep, you won't wake him up. I said, I'm oh, joking. All right, Joan, I'm talking about you, buddy. He said, he, he said he's going to make it. So uh, if you're going to get product, get him as quickly as possible and then come back in because we got to change clothes and make our way for a four hour and something drive. But it's been a privilege being here. But the greatest thing is the spirit that does the work and this is this is the working of the spirit thank you pastor for the invitation keep up the good work we can't get distracted this is the greatest opportunity for the church that's ever had to win the lost win the lost hallelujah can somebody give the lord a good hand clap of praise if you want some product try to get it quickly as possible so these gentlemen can get back on the road I wanted to just testify just a, a minute, amen. I wanted to say this, this whole revival, this whole camp meeting, uh, it's been freedom every night. It, it's been the cross. And and uh, my wife and I were sitting last night at a restaurant with the evangelist and both our, both our phones went off at the same time. Looked down and we hadn't seen our son, our baby son in two years until we just took off and went where he was. Hadn't seen him, hardly ever even talked to him. He wouldn't even take my call, nothing. Just living, running from God. He texted my wife last night and me at the same time, said, please say a prayer for me. Amen. God's working on him. I've been praying, Lord, take that, take the pleasure out of that sin that's in the season he's in. Amen. And God's going to call him back. Preached twice in his life, and he preached right here. It's the only place he ever preached. Amen. And I believe he's coming back. Amen. And I believe your family's coming back, and your loved ones that's lost is coming in. Amen. Amen. Can we just be dismissed tonight? Let's just be dismissed. Thank you for everybody that came out, all the churches that are represented, all the pastors. We give honor to you tonight. Thank you for being a part of this of this great camp meeting. Amen. This great move of God. Let's pray. Father, we love and bless the name of the Lord. So thankful for what we've experienced. For we know that this is an experiential gospel, Lord. And we've experienced your presence, your power, and your glory in this house all week long, God. I pray, God, be with the saints of God. Lord, strengthen them. I pray for that one that's closest to hell, God, that you go get them. Pull them back into the sheepfold, Lord. Bless and touch every pastor, Lord, that came out, Lord, and took time out of their busy schedule, Lord. Pour a fresh oil in their church and, and give them souls for their labors. And Father, we give you praise, honor, and glory. And the church said, Amen. God bless you as you go home. Thank you for supporting Camp Lee.